Okay, Jeff. So we've got Tesla's earnings results for the third quarter. I'm just peeking at them here on my monitor. And the question, there's a question that we want to answer about the results. Yes. I think we have a few questions. There's a couple of things we've been debating back and forth before we hit record. I'm excited to have a conversation about this company with you. We're going to talk through that. I'm Jason Hall. This is The Smattering. And this video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. If you're looking for even more great stock ideas than the one we're going to talk about here, go to our special link, fool.com forward slash The Smattering. The Motley Fool is going to give you its 10 best stocks to buy right now. Check out that link after checking out this video. Okay, Jeff, let's hit the high notes of the results and start comparing it to last year and talk through this. So the first thing I noticed when I looked at the results is if you forget all of the Tesla specific KPIs, deliveries and production and all that stuff, and just look at the regular financial metrics that get reported for every company, things don't look great. Revenue in this quarter that just finished or was just re was reported was only up 9%. That's the lowest it's been in a very long time. Year over year revenue growth has been trending down for quite a while now. Gross profit, gross margin, heading in the wrong direction, net income, earnings per share, heading in the wrong direction, free cash flow, not as high as it was. So when you look at those numbers, you might say to yourself, I don't get it. Things aren't looking great. But when you turn to specific numbers about Tesla, which the big ones we all focus on are production and deliveries, those are looking at least a little bit better. So while production was down, which we knew was going to happen because of some planned factory shuts and, and retooling and things like that, the Model 3 and Model Y deliveries were up 29% over the, the previous year's quarter. So, you know, and total deliveries, by the way, were up 27 So on that metric, things are still looking pretty good. The, the question I have for you and the question we're going to answer in this video is how do we think about what's happening, which is basically... They're off, they're selling the cars for a bigger big discount to where they were even a few months ago. And that's why we're seeing margins compress. Is that brilliant or is that bad? And here's the way, here's one way to think of it. Tesla had, and maybe doesn't have as much anymore, a significant operating margin advantage over traditional automakers. So put simply, they can make electric cars at a higher profit margin and operating margin then, yeah, and it was across their entire margin profile, right. better gross margin, better operating margin, all the margins, yeah, better cash flows, better across the board. So if you have that advantage over your automaker competitors, is it wise to burn it? Think of it as, as house money, just burn it and sell the cars for way less just to grab as much market share as possible. Because if you're going back and forth between buying another internal combustion car and buying an electric car, and you're looking at the typical family sedans that everyone buys, the Toyota Camry, the Honda Accord, and all of a sudden you can see, oh, wow, the Tesla whatever is cheaper than or just the same price as, does that make someone who wasn't really considering an EV now consider one? Is this a, a brilliant strategy to grab share while they have that advantage of higher margins to burn in order to get it? So a couple things before I really get into the details on my thoughts about this is we've really known, Jeff, I guess it's about 10 months ago, it was late last year that Tesla started talking about price cuts in certain markets. And then we saw more and more price cuts steadily happening throughout the early and mid part of the year. And I think this is the first quarter where we've really seen it in its most pronounced way. We saw it in the second quarter. And now again, the third quarter that was just reported, this is probably the most pronounced. So looking at it from an operating margin level, which is really good because that takes the gross margin of the vehicles and then you factor out all the operating expenses that are not part of cost of goods sold, but you running your home office and accounting department and all of that kind of stuff, all of those layers of the business and the operating margin, basically that's what's left, those margin dollars, the operating cash flow that's left there and your operating profit is what's left. That's your profit, basically. So again, looking at the third quarter, year over year, back in 2022, operating margin was 17.2%. And the quarter that was just reported, the 2023 third quarter, that number was 7 points. So it fell more than half, significantly more than half. And as a result, we saw an operating income of $1.8 billion on a gap basis. And year over year, the operating income was $3.7 billion. So again, that's basically a $2 billion reduction, again, more than half decline in operating income. We talked about those revenue numbers that you reported, the delivery numbers. I'm going to pull that up and I want to highlight it again, because again, this shows 
how much it carried over and affected the business at the bottom line. So again, we saw deliveries. And again, I'm not, we're going we're to skip production and look at deliveries, 27% deliveries. We knew, again, production was going to be slower in the quarter because all the things you talked about, because they're making investments to expand capacity and also to help drive costs down in, in their existing facilities. And that's why production was down. 27% more vehicles delivered. And again, the vast majority was three Ys. That was up 29%. This is a much cheaper vehicle than the Model S and X platform is. So that had something to do with the fact that revenue was only up 5% for the automotive business, right? right? So again, that 5% increase off of 27% increase in, in deliveries, that's clearly the impacts on the companies of the price cuts, right? Change in the mix, but also of the price cuts. I will say this, the core question that we're trying to answer is this a brilliant move? I think if it's an intentional move to take market share and to leverage its existing cost advantage, because there's two things that Tesla has, whether it's the legacies or whether it's the other EV manufacturers, has anything close to Tesla scale to manufacture an electric vehicle. It has the supplier relationships. It has the operating efficiency to get the operating leverage to get really good cost advantages, right? That is a huge advantage in the automotive industry right now, which at, at, at a steady state mature industry, it's price. People have certain loyalties to their vehicles, but what you'll see is like using pickup trucks as an example, a Ford F-150 and a Chevy Silverado 1500, their sticker price is about the same for the same features. They trade for the same price because they have to, because you, so where you don't get advantages on pricing, you don't have pricing power to charge more, you get cost advantages by leveraging your manufacturing. So we know that Tesla has that in spades right now. So it has the scale and that gives it the cost advantage. So it is certainly leveraging that. Jeff, what we don't know, and this is where I think the big, this is the question the only time is going to answer, is we don't know clearly how much of Tesla's price cutting was an intentional move to take share and how much of it is just a competitive reaction to the market? We don't, but here's something just to consider, okay? So their operating margin in this quarter was seven point something, if I'm remembering correctly. I don't have yeah, it in front of me 70%. anymore. Yeah, yeah. So just real quick, I pulled up the operating margin for General Motors, Toyota, and Volkswagen. 5.1, 5.3, 3.1. So to my earlier point, if they keep their operating margins around 7% in and the legacy automakers don't get much above where they are. They're still almost double the operating margin of their competitors. And if they can do that, stay ahead of them in that sense and gain share with competitively priced cars. Again, we don't know if this is why this is happening, but I think you can make the argument that it actually isn't as bad as some people are making it out to be. Yeah, I think there's two questions that, that come to mind. And again, it is less about the why, right? Well, here's one thing we should point out though. It's also not, it is, Tesla is priced like a company that has 17% operating margins, not like it has 7% operating margins. Yeah, so that's right. something so we're to talking consider. about the business and not the stock. That's, right, a really, right, right. that's a really good point. And, and as much as there's all of the other things out there, there's Dojo and the, the AI stuff and the solar business and the battery business and all these other things and the autonomous vehicles business and all these things that you can say are, are levers for future growth. This is a car maker today, right? This is the vast majority of their business is, is making and selling cars and getting the profit on those cars. So again, thinking about that core business and what they're competing against is vastly underappreciated in terms of really thinking about the competitive threats and challenges and opportunities for Tesla, right? So again, within the box of thinking about this business, here's my concern. My concern about this as a tool for Tesla that's just about taking market share and growth is it's not completely clear Again, they're still growing their volumes at a good rate. There's no doubt about that. A lot of it's been from price cuts and the shift of that mix. And they're still substantially profitable, more profitable than most other automakers are. That Again, that is clear. But we've heard from every single automaker, all of them, whether it's the legacies that are trying to start up their EV businesses or the EV startups that are trying to be the next Tesla, everybody has softness. We've seen for most of a year now, we've seen the Rivians of the world, the Lucids are struggling with orders, right? They're getting less and less pre-orders. They're having trouble coming online. They've had to back off because there hasn't been as much demand as they expected. General Motors, we did, I did a video with Tyler on this channel that looked at what GM said, and they basically 
they blew up their short-term guidance for EV deliveries because it doesn't look like they're going to have any, and they pushed off like their truck EV factory a year. So there's real serious concerns about consumer demands. And if consumer demand continues to be weak, if the economic environment continues to soften, if interest rates continue to stay persistently high, Jeff, my concern is that this cost advantage that Tesla has, they continue to have to dial it up. And again, we see operating margins go from 17 to seven to, to three or four, right? So all of a sudden you get basically to the same margins as the rest of the industry. This is why that's really important. Tesla is still planning a ton of growth. They have a strong balance sheet, but they're going to need more capital to continue to grow. If their margins continue to erode, their cost of capital is going to go up, whether it's issuing more stock, because if the margins keep coming down, the stock's going to come down. It's going to take more share capital to raise money. Lenders are going to say, well, your, profit, your profitability isn't as attractive and we're concerned and the rates aren't going to necessarily be as favorable. So investors need to be thoughtful about those downside risks as much as the upside and using this as a tool. Yeah, for sure. I think a, a way to wrap up the conversation is maybe to think about it this way. We don't know yet what this is going to shake out to be. If operating margin continues to decline, that's a whole different story than if it either holds steady here or starts to tick back up. So I think right now my take on it is not looking great, but there's a way in which this could work out. We just have to wait and see over the next several quarters which way that goes. Yeah, it's certainly been an advantage and it's going to be some advantage. To your point, the question is just how much. 